Welcome to Truth For Our Time with your host, Tamara Scott. And good day. Thank you for joining us. It is the first day we've been together since Thanksgiving. I hope that yours was blessed. I had uh, intended to, to charge you and give you a little challenge before Thanksgiving. And as you remember, our guest last week was so tremendous. Bill Federer. Uh, did such a great job of bringing us from the beginning of time almost, uh, the beginning of world history as we were studying it, um, it, to where we were with America and the the pilgrims. And um, he interwines uh, how Islam has been involved and impacted the history of America and um, world history. And you'll hear people talking about the positive contributions of Islam he didn't mention any of those, but he did bring in how they had impacted uh, Columbus coming to America because they had closed off all of the land passages for trade. And Queen Isabella and Ferdinand were looking for a way to find trade and sent uh, Columbus to find a sea route. So that's how we found America. So a positive outcome, but but it goes back to the verse of what others mean for harm, uh, God can use for good. And so he, he just brings it through so quickly. I've had great comments from several of you on that show, so I hope you can go back and listen to that and enjoy uh, as he reaffirms the godly foundations of this country. Today, for those of you who are listening, thank you. Welcome to joining us Wednesday here, 10 a.m. live on Webcast One Studios. And we thank our sponsors at Webcast One, uh, J. Michael McCoy, for loaning us the airtime, sharing the air with us. We also thank Christians for America. Crave, Christians Reviving American Values Every Day. ChristiansforAmerica.com, a great sponsor and friend to us, and we're so appreciative of what they've done. This is this is um, a ministry that understands the culture and the impact that we must have as Christians and what happens when we don't. And I just appreciate their heart coming alongside with us and making it possible for us to get information to you each day. If you'd like to join them in a partnership financially, uh, 501c3, you can um, send it to uh, Crave uh, ChristiansforAmerica.com. Check in with them and get the address. If you'd like to consider being a sponsor on the show, you can check with 99.3 FM KTIA, the local central Iowa station that is kind enough to air our show. And you know what? I've been listening to more and more of that station as um, uh, now that I'm a part on it, and 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 I think they've changed their schedule, and I'm working harder to find them. Ninety nine point three FM on the dial, and I am honored to be in the lineup with some of these um, wonderful shows: David Jeremiah, Ravi Zacharias. What a blessing for me to even get to be in that lineup. So you can hear the show there, 99.3 FM on Sundays at noon, sometimes on your way home from church, sometimes while you're fixing dinner, or some of you are heading back out. You've been home and you're heading back out for the day. And I hear from you. Um, when I see you, you you'll, uh, it's happened to me a couple of Sundays. Someone will say, I just heard you on the radio and here you are. So thank you for the feedback. Thank you for listening. And uh, we always try to give you helpful news when the headlines hit home. If God expects you to live to it, he's directed you how to do it in his word. So no matter what it is we're dealing with, we always find, one, the hope and the solution uh, here at Truth For Our Times. We thank you for being with us. I have some news I need to tell you. For those of you who are listening live on uh, the Webcast One Live, 10 a.m. Wednesday, uh, this will be very timely for you, and you have time to take action on this. For those of you who are hearing 99.3, um, it may have now uh, gone through the, the the congressional channels, but never hurts to let your legislators know where you're at on the issues just as well. So I'm going to give you a phone number. As I always tell you, keep a pen and pencil handy when you listen to this show or put the phone number in your phone, wherever you keep your uh, numbers you need often. This is one you should always have ready on the fridge or your phone or wherever you keep your numbers. It is 202. 202- 224-3121-202-224-3121. Ryan, you're so quick to have that on the screen. Uh, that is your congressional switchboard number. You, that will get you to anyone, no matter where you live in America. That will get you to your congressional members and your U.S. Senate, uh, Senate members. So right now, here we are, Wednesday, 10 a.m., and Jane Robbins, who is often a guest on this show, she's with American Principles Project, helped me draft the resolution for the RNC on the advanced placement for U.S. history exams being revamped. She's sent warning that they are still the limbo, the vote is in limbo, and some of the Republicans and some of the representatives are now calling for a delay on the vote of the every uh, 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 ES, uh, ESEA or ESSA 
Every Student Succeeds Act or Elementary Secondary Education Act. Either one of those works. Just tell your congressional members and your senators, and you need to call them both, both because the House was supposed to vote on it today, I think, and the Senate tomorrow. So call them both and and uh, call them, call all of them in your state because they represent you. And doesn't matter what party, let them know. That number will get you to all of them. That you want them to vote no. Do not reauthorize No Child Left Behind, which is essentially what this is. And it hasn't been made better. It's been made worse. Further regulations, further um, federal oversight and intrusion. And from what I'm hearing, Grandma Emmett McGrody from American Principles Project says you will not be able to um, uh, opt out as states from this whole Common Core mess if they, if they um, in the language of the No Child Left Behind, the secretary ignored in pushing the Common Core and the aligned assessments onto the states. And as with No Child Left Behind, there is no enforcement mechanism for the states to use in challenging the secretary's violations or the pro, uh, of these prohibitions. So again, he's saying there's no opt out here. There's no guarantee. There's a Zedlin amendment. And if one of your congressional members or Senate members tries to tell you that they're going to vote for it because of that amendment, Emmett McGrody, who has studied this, I assure you, understands this, says that will not be good enough. Do not let them be fooled with the Zedlin Amendment. Do not reauthorize No Child Left Behind. No ESEA, Elementary Secondary Education Act. No ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act. So call wherever you're at, wherever you're listening from in the U.S. And uh, to our friends across the sea, thank you for listening, but this won't... If you're if you're a resident, you can still call absolutely 202-224-312 and gets you to any of those members. Sorry to take up that time because we have a great great guest lineup today, and I want to get right to that. But I had to let you know about that. You have you need to take action, you as parents. The other thing in that that bill, they say that we will greatly lose parental cont- local control and parental rights. So please take it upon yourself, grandparent, parent, no children. Take it upon yourself to call and keep local control, parental rights, and uh, let them know. No no E-S-E-A, no E-S-S-A, no reauthorization of the child left behind. Regulations, oversight, government intrusion, federal overreach fits right into what we're going to talk about today. Joining me, I have two very wonderful people who I've had the joy of getting to know over the years, but they both have their expertise in this realm of government oversight, overstepping, and regulations. First, I'm going to introduce to you Paul Reynolds. Paul Reynolds is the National Committee Wham for Alabama, and he serves on the Resolution Committee. And on that committee, he has been instrumental in understanding the overreach of government and bringing us several resolutions that we have passed at the RNC to restrict and reduce government. Paul Reynolds, thank you for joining me. Good morning, Tamara. Good to be with you. Thank you. And you also um, have a company called Reynolds Technical. And uh, is that a media company? Uh, Reynolds Technical Associates is basically uh, an engineering, consulting engineering firm uh, that we uh, practice RF engineering. Uh, RF, of course, standing for radio frequency, which means that sending uh, data from one point to another without the aid of a wire uh, is RF, and uh, we work in that uh, arena, but uh, we do have some uh, radio stations. We're a broadcasting company also. Okay, very good. Joining us also is uh, Paul, uh, uh, Rob Porter from uh, Charleston, West Virginia. And Rob Porter, I see often at the RNC as his wife serves as the National Committee woman for West Virginia. And what a benefit and an asset she is to the RNC, heading up the conservative uh, committee, the conservative coalition, and also serving on the resolution committee. Rob is the president and owner of TriStar Coal Cells Company. Rob, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for inviting me, and um, I'm looking forward to the next hour to uh, tell you the sad story that we have in the coal business here in West Virginia and elsewhere. So I'm looking at a picture of you. For those of you who are watching online, we have photos of both Paul and uh, Rob. And Rob, you're standing in front of railway cars full of coal. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on, as I'm reading 
through all of these links and websites. And listeners, I will try to get this on the website. Last week being Thanksgiving, I did not get uh, that link up there. I will still try and do that for you, I promise. But I will try and get some of these links with all these regulations and this information up for you um, on the TamaraScott.com website, TamaraScott.com. But Rob, there's so much I'm reading. Okay, first off, let's just start here. This year, while we were enjoying Thanksgiving dinner, we were preparing to feast on Turkey, and the Obama administration was preparing to feast on our billfolds. 2,224 regulations were set to go into place Friday. More calories than we took in on Thursday. The, new, the administration was going to put new regulations in place on Friday. 2,224 on to, set to go in 2000, uh, Friday of 2015, right after Thanksgiving. And Michael Bastach, um, B-A-S-T-A-S-C-H, has written about this the last couple of years. He said that this administration does this purposely. They continue to do this around Thanksgiving, Memorial Day, Easter. They purposely set these regulations in place when no one's paying attention and going to miss them or the news won't cover them. In 2014, at Thanksgiving, 3,415 new regulations. Rob, as I'm reading through them, I'm seeing a lot of information in the 2014 uh, regulations about coal mines, rules banning coal mines, coal-fired power plants. So tell us what impact, and I'll warn you right now, we'll go to our first break in about four minutes, but tell us a little bit of the impact that this is having on your industry. The Obama EPA, what they did uh, several years ago is they set the emission limits at coal-fired power plants so low that with existing technology, these emission limits would be impossible to achieve. So as a result, the only alternative that uh, the utilities had on coal-fired power plants was to shut power plants down to meet these overall emission limits. So there's been numerous coal-fired power plants that have been shut down just in the last couple of years, and there are more coal-fired power plants that are going to be shut down uh, next year also. And they've just set the limits that there's no way to achieve these limits. So as a result of all of that, uh, here in West Virginia, we have lost in the last two years 8,000 mining jobs have been lost. And as a result of those 8,000 mining jobs, uh, we have also, of course, all in the overall effect for the support businesses in West Virginia, you can add to that an additional 20,000 people that will probably lose their jobs because they support the coal industry in a number of different ways. And I also, uh, I want to, before I get too far along in this, I want to thank all of those coal miners, anyone that's, on, that's listening to this broadcast, I want to thank those coal miners for uh, the work that they do to make electricity in this country. Uh, people need to realize that there are thousands of coal miners every day that go down into this hole in the earth, dig this coal out of the ground, and ship it to these coal-fired power plants so that little Johnny can play his video games and, and can power their, everybody's homes. And it's, it's, they're not appreciated for what they do. It's hard work. They're good paying jobs, but it's hard work. And if you can imagine, uh, there's uh, actually there in southern Illinois, there's actually been a tremendous increase in uh, the production of coal. And I just don't think people appreciate what these guys do so that we can all enjoy having electricity the way we have it today. So in addition to all of this, the limits on the, the sad part, too, about the coal industry is that the limits now for coal-fired power plants are so strict that the future of coal-fired power plants as it is today, they will never be built, and they can't be built because there's no existing technology to, to get to the emission limits that they require. Okay. Rob Potter is who you're hearing. He's the president and owner of TriStar Coal Sales Company. Paul Reynolds, National Committee Man from Alabama, is also on the, on the show with us today. We're talking about the regulations and how they impact you. And if you don't think it does, stick around. Increased cost, 
It's coming at you. We'll explain it later. You're listening to Truth For Our Time on 99.3 FM and Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcastonelive.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to... Working in a coal mine, going down, down, down. Working in a coal mine, about to fill down. All righty. I couldn't resist, guys. I hope you're okay with that. I just, I couldn't resist playing that song when, when I knew what we were going to be talking about today. I'm talking with Rob Potter, who is the president and owner of tri Sales Coal Company out of West Virginia, and Paul Reynolds, who is national committee man out of Alabama for the RNC and also uh, with the Reynolds uh, Technical Association. Associates, both of you can join in this conversation, but we're talking about the regulations that we're dealing with. And and uh, I don't know, maybe it was you, Rob, who sent me this article on Uline.com, the huge the Uline shipping supplies, talking about the cost of these regulations. It's phenomenal. Um, uh, we have 16 new regulations to every one law passed. It is the bureaucrats that are creating law in America unconstitutionally. It's not going through Congress. Remember, we had we had David Barnett on uh, David uh, uh, Barton on here the Wednesday after the elections in 2014, and he reminded us that we have had uh, 3,800 laws. This was in 2014. We had 3,800 laws passed. Not uh, excuse me, not passed. Added not passed through the Congressional House and Senate like the Constitution requires, but through regulatory committees, 
Paul, this is where you have been instrumental in helping us understand how many regular com- regulatory committees do we have now in, in D.C. and elsewhere. Well, this all began because of uh, one particular bureaucrat in Washington that did not like the way we approached uh, our en- engineering process in the spectrum and decided that uh, he wanted to stop it, and he put forth a concerted effort to do it, and he did it. Uh, And uh, as a result of that, our family business lost 70% of its income. That tends to motivate one to begin to look into this. And so uh, one of the things that I did is start this series of resolutions that we've done at the RNC, and I needed to get into the history of regulation in order to do that. Uh, And uh, so I started doing the research, and I went all the way back to a a particular piece of legislation that passed the House and Senate signed into law called the Administrative Procedures Act of 1946. Now, this was started in 1933, which quite obviously it was part of the New Deal. And uh, it was put into place in order to let the uh, process that was started in the New Deal uh, continue after the New Deal era was over. And they decided they would do it through regulatory agencies. Uh, When the Administrative Procedures Act uh, was passed, there were 15 uh, government regulatory agencies. It immediately blossomed from 15 to 45. However, the people that were in Congress had said, well, this is going to stop at this point because it's going to be so difficult to add new agencies. Let's fast forward from 1946 to 2015, and we'll see how correct they were. Uh, According to the um, the Federal Register, which is also itself a a government agency, not a regulatory agency, but it is a government agency, Um, the Federal Register says that in 2015 there are 435 federal agencies in existence and operating. That does not include the sub-agencies that are part of the big agencies like USDA, EPA, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There are sub-agencies there that just regulate one particular point, but they churn out these regulations to the tune of about 167 every two weeks. They're in uh, in pro- in process right now. In other words, in in uh, uh, operation, there is over one million federal regular regulatory agency uh, rules and regulations, and uh, they increase at the tune of about three uh, three thousand five hundred three thousand eight hundred per year. <laughs> Incredible. Um, and, Paul, give us the name of that act again, the, the 1946. Yes, uh, APA, APA uh, 1946, the Administrative Procedures Act of 1946. And that is still in existence, and it is the basis, it is the legislative law basis for all federal regulatory agencies. And so... Rob, we were talking about your industry, the coal mining industry, and for those of us in Iowa, those of us across the nation, we might think that that doesn't impact us like it may you in West Virginia, where there are a lot of coal mines. Alabama apparently has coal mines as well, Paul? Oh, very much so. Uh, One of the biggest in the business, and I'm sure Rob knows of uh, uh, Drummond Coal. Uh, uh, Well, the number two producer in Alabama is uh, called Jim Walter. It's an outgrowth of the uh, company that years ago used to make uh, prefabricated uh, houses. Uh, Jim Walter Mining headquarters is about mm, across town, so that's about 20 miles away from where I am right now. Jim Walter uh, moved his headquarters, national headquarters, to Birmingham, and everybody was really excited. It was great. It was a big impact uh, 
now, uh, since the Obama administration has, uh, through EPA, has continued to clamp down, uh, and as Obama said himself, and, you know, we have it on tape, uh, and it's been publicized over and over and over again, before he was elected, he says, to follow my plan... Utility rates will, of necessity, have to skyrocket, and uh, we want to make it to where, uh, yes, you can build a new uh, new coal-fired uh, uh, generating plant if you want to, but the costs are going to be so prohibitive, we'll regulate them out of business, and that's exactly what's happened. So Jim Walter uh, Coal Mining is now in bankruptcy. And I'm uh, one of the articles I read when I was searching this through. That was is that the largest coal mining company east of the Mississippi? Jim Walter, I think I would think Drummond is larger, but uh, uh, Jim Walter is. Where would it rank in the uh, the hierarchy, Rob? Um, I would say they're probably maybe fourth or fifth uh, as far as producing coal. But there are also two other major companies. One is Alpha Natural Resources, and they have coal mines all over the United States, and they are now in Chapter 11. And then there is another company, which is called Patriot Coal Company, which has also been in Chapter 11. So, And, and there's probably going to be maybe one or two more major coal companies that are also going to be in Chapter 11. So you're looking at a huge transformation that has been caused by uh, all of this. And, and I have to also add something to that is that uh, we have also benefited in this country with low natural gas prices, and they have taken part of the coal market uh, also. And the other portion of the electrical uh, demand uh, are the renewables. And our competition there is solar and wind, and they get subsidized. So you have really uh, uh, three major players here. Uh, natural gas is not regulated like the coal business. So what's created here is kind of an un, uh, unfair playing field. You have coal that's overregulated and it has driven their costs up. When you have natural gas overproduction, which has caused natural gas prices to stay low, which really in the uh, in the overall energy, it's a it's a good we can have much natural gas, uh, and they do make electricity with it. It is a cleaner burning fuel, but what I'm saying is that they're with the solar and wind, they all get subsidized with our tax dollars, and then we and then in the coal business we have to compete with them. But one of the things I wanted to also mention to you all is the financial impact that, it, that this all has had in West Virginia. And I'll, if you'll give me a minute, I'll just explain some of this to you. Um, we have a severance tax on coal here, and that basically is a percentage of the it's the tons times the percentage of the sales price. And in the last two years, we used to, in the past, we would collect severance taxes in, the, in and around $500 million. And this year, that number is going to be $300 million. So that's a 40% reduction in severance taxes, which the majority of those funds go to two places, local county schools and senior services. As a result of that, you know, we're a very small state, so $200 million is a lot of money for us. And so just to give you even a smaller example of this, and this, this money is distributed to all of the counties. There's a coal-producing county called Nicholas County here, and they used to get $3 million a year is their share of the severance tax. Well, now it's $2 million. So they've had to go in and, and you know, let school teachers go. They've had to reduce senior services. Uh, there have been school closings in the coal-producing counties because their severance taxes or the, the amount of revenue they're getting has been so dramatically reduced that even some of the public services, like picking up trash and things like that, they just had to stop. So it's really had a dramatic effect, and I don't know the budget for the state of West Virginia. They're going to have to cut somewhere because that's a lot of money. That, we're not, that we don't have, and I don't know if we're ever going to get back to that. Not only is it costing you in that area, but it's costing you in the jobs. People are losing their jobs because of these regulations, 
and it it stops, it stifles employers from being able to start new jobs. Whether we're talking about the Obamacare Affordable Health Care Act, that is really stifling the economy because if you have a certain number of employees, if your country company's doing well, they're going to penalize you even gr- more greatly. Um, but it, it really stifles what you can do. In fact, um, in one of these articles, it's talking about a gentleman from Euro Pacific Capital testified at the subcommittee government reform stimulus oversight in September of 2011 to address the negative impact on regulations. And he said it's increased the cost and the risks associated with job creation. He was penalized, fined $15,000 expressly for hiring too many brokers in 2008. Now think this through. We want the economy to grow, but we penalize those who are successful just because we have a greedy, predatory government that wants some of that money every time they see someone able to make money some money. And this is what I'm talking about today. If you don't think this impacts you because you're not in West Virginia, Alabama, you're not involved in the coal mining industry, it impacts you through taxes and regulation. Paul, we've got just a minute before we go to break, but give us that figure that would save the average homeowner. If we would reduce some of these regulations, the average family could save how much a year? Well, uh, the Competitive Enterprise Institute has compiled this, and uh, they have it fully documented. Today, the average American household pays an additional $14,974 annually for products and services that is inflated in price over what it could be if the federal regulatory burden were removed. So that means... The spendable income of each household in America uh, is fourteen thousand nine hundred and seventy something dollars more than it would be if the federal government were out of our lives. Now that's a pay raise, fourteen grand per household each year. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Stay tuned. You're listening to Truth for Our Time from the Webcast One Live Studios at ninety nine point three FM. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, You come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about, is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. (laughs) We have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, 
We have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're going to make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Welcome back to Truth For Our Time with your host, Tamara Scott. And thanks for staying tuned with us. We are bringing you help when the headlines hit home. Thanksgiving Day, while you were enjoying uh, time with your family, thought you had time to rest. You can never rest when someone's active in Washington. And while you were worried about taking in maybe 1,000 calories that day, maybe 2,000, I don't know, 2,224 uh, regulations were passed the next day. Now, that's not as many as the 3,000 the year before on Thanksgiving break. But this administration is known for, according to Michael um, Bastion is his name, I'm, if I'm saying it correctly, it is uh, B A. S-T-A-S-C-H. He writes, uh, this article was on Daily Caller, but he's he's uh, kind of summarized for the last couple of, actually he goes through several breaks where this administration likes to slide in reg new regulations. Now understand what these are. These are not laws that go through Congress, the people you elect, the way that the founding fathers set it up, the third branch, you know, uh, the, actually the second branch, the congressional branch, was set up to, uh, actually it's the first branch in the article of the Constitution, this isn't Congress first? Oh, I better go look, now I'm embarrassed. But Congress is to to pass the laws, and they're, all laws of appropriations are supposed to start in the House, because that's where your purse is controlled, and that's your quickest time to respond, two years term is the term, and you can quickly vote them out if they overstep their bounds. Now we've seen this is not the case. Uh, Obamacare, I believe, started in the Senate, if I'm right on this, but then they tried to say it wasn't a tax, and then, but then the court said it wasn't a fine, it was a tax. You can just see, and then Obama with his own administrative rules has come back and changed the law without going through the process on the health care. Uh, let's play the clip right now from David Barton talking about the um, 81,000 laws. Thousand new laws passed by regulation, not by legislators, by regulation. Um, there have been so many of these laws passed that right now, if you were to make a, a, a commitment to read 700 pages a week of the federal code, and the federal code is where all these laws are, this is why you can be arrested and thrown in jail. If you were to do 700 pages a week of the federal code, it would take you 25,000 years to read the federal code as it stands right now. Uh, Alan Dershowitz, who is a liberal law professor at Harvard, is, is part of a book called Three Felonies a Day. And he points out that the average American commits three felonies a day because of all these laws, most of which we don't even know what they mean. All right. Uh, there's a case. Let's go ahead. Thank you so much. David Barton was on this show the day after the election, 2014, and we were discussing this. Paul, uh, Rob, uh, open it up to both of you. The regulations have run amok. Unelected bureaucrats are running the system and creating fees, surcharges, and even fines. David talks about these regulations they are creating will place people in jail. He's talking about felonies. These are not laws that go through congressional members that we have elected to represent us. This, we're being taxed one representation, representation with, a taxation without representation because we don't have input with these bureaucrats. We have no accountability, no, no hold on them. Uh, right here in Des Moines, there are several cases I could list to you. Folks, look at your bills. You're, you've got a 17% tax on your wireless communications between combines federal, state, local government wireless taxes. Look at your gas pump. The surcharge there. Um, uh, these folks are running the show. And honestly, this is my opinion, not my guest. This is why I don't support term limits, because you'll have bureaucrats. You've got to have somebody there who's long enough to figure out how it works to have the guts and the courage to go after them. Like we're seeing a Grassley do now in many instances. Took on Common Core. He's taken on several of these these issues, the Fast and Furious. If you have term limits, these the bureaucrats will definitely be running the show from the inside. Paul, uh, Rob, your take on some of this. Well, I, I can tell you, I have 30 years of experience in the coal industry, 
And I have never seen an outright attack from the beginning, all the way from the producer side, all the way through to the utilities that, that make electricity. It's an ongoing attack to get rid of coal in this country. And it's, it's, it's nonstop. Just when you think that, you know, one regulation is enough, they're relentless in their pursuit. And I'll mention to you, and Paul probably is aware of this, but there's another thing that they want to, they're requiring states to do, and it's called the Clean Power Plan. And what they're requiring each and every state to do is to come up with a plan on how you're going to reduce even more emissions than you already are. And so, and it's ongoing, and I can tell you that our attorney general here in West Virginia has joined up with 23 other states and also the United Mine Workers of America in suing the EPA over this clean power plan, because what they tell you is, if you don't come up with your own plan, we will come up with a plan for you. So this is just yet another long-term attack on the war on coal. And the, Paul, go ahead. Well, I'd like to approach this uh, going back to historical uh, process and show you why we're in the mess we're in. Uh, going back to 1946 again. Um, in 1946, when this st- uh, started to be put to, uh, put together, um, the charges from the Republicans uh, in uh, Congress was that what the uh, APA did was establish a fourth branch of government, which is prohibited by the Constitution. Right. Uh, and um, they said, oh, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, we'll let the president appoint the members of the governing committee of a uh, regulatory agency, and uh, they will be approved by Congress. Well, the farce to that is this. The president uh, appoints the majority of the members. In other words, the party that is in the White House uh, controls the majority of the members of a regulatory agency. Uh, Usually it's a five-member agency. They ballooned it to seven uh, but they have brought it back, by and large, to five members. Each agency will have five members. Um, what the other charge was, and this is the most serious one, and uh, I think people do not realize what has happened to us by stealth, by sinister moves, and I say that the moves are go beyond being stealth. They go beyond being sinister. They go to being insidious. Uh, And this is what has happened. This was the charge in 1946. Uh, The Republicans that were fighting the passage of this bill said, what you're attempting to do is create something called a central planning committee. Now, if you know anything from uh, high school history and studying uh, government, Uh, You know that the Central Planning Committee is the keystone, it is the center point of communism, and uh, that was a part of Karl Marx's original plan, a Central Planning Committee. What uh, really contributed to the downfall of the Soviet Union was the grinding to a halt of the economy because it was so over-regulated and uh, controlled by the Central Planning Committee. Uh, uh, The invisible hand, quite obviously, controls things much better than any man sitting down behind a desk uh, planning out what you should do with uh, your potatoes and uh, when uh, really you grow corn much better on your land than you do potatoes. Uh, That's, you know, the, the charge then was the evolution of a central planning committee. That is what has happened to us, and what Rob is experiencing in uh, West Virginia with coal, what we're experiencing uh, in Alabama with coal, what we're experiencing in our industry, which is broadcasting, uh, 
you can just keep on going. Right. I mean, right. it affects every living American every day, and it's consistent in its progression, regardless of who's in the White House and regardless of who's in Congress. It can be Republican uh, go- uh, president, a Republican House, a Republican Senate. But yes, this, pro- this uh, process that was started in 1946 is still going on and increasing. It increased uh, almost as much under the Bush administration as it uh, did uh, under Clinton. And we're going to be coming back with some more impact that it has on you and your families. This election cycle, you need to be asking these candidates. Stay tuned. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome back to Truth For Our Time with your host, Tamara Scott. Thank you for staying tuned. I am with uh, Rob po- uh, Potter, who is the president and owner of Tri uh, State S- uh, Tri-State Sales, uh, coal sales company in West Virginia. Paul Reynolds, who is with uh, Reynolds Technical Associates out of Alabama. We're talking about regulations and how they impact you. Listen to me. Candidates are parading themselves, walking around, talking about minimum wage. First off, I don't care what party line they come from. If they're talking about leveling out the pay raise or, or the, 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 the income field, that is yours to do through potential. Uh, we have that illustration in Matthew in the Bible when he pays the, the folks in the vineyard and, 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 and the owner says, you know, that is up to me how much I pay them depending on how much they work and if I want to give them the same amount when they come in the afternoon. David Barton will tell you you need to let the market set the wage so that it can be competitive with the economy and that way layoffs don't have to occur with Maybe it has to decrease in a time of recession and people are just thrilled to have a job for a little less money. But if you have that minimum wage, they can't hire those folks. It hurts the business. It hurts those folks who need a job. It's not biblical. One. Two, it is farcical because you're not going to help somebody survive by giving them a pay increase that one is minimal, but it's also going to raise the cost of the product. It raises the cost of labor, which comes right back around to every family's household. Cost of living goes up and it hits you again. It's like me telling a child, I'm going to give you a raise in your allowance from $5 to $6. Oh, and by the way, I'm now going to charge you, have to charge you a little more for uh, the things that I'm doing here. Or you're going to have to chip in with the gas. It will not help. But here's the thing that would help a great deal. Paul gave you that figure over $14,000 a year. We could save each family 
the family, the average cost of savings would be over $14,000 a year. That, my friends, is a pay raise. And that doesn't put you in a t- higher tax bracket where the government will just take more of it yet. Or cost of living will go up because of an, a forced minimum wage increase. That hurts us all. We see fast food restaurants are now going to automated um, tellers to take the orders. It hurts It stops him from hiring young folks who need jobs. It stops him from hiring folks who would just be thrilled to have a little bit of extra income, maybe a second job. But offering that tax reduction lessens the cost of government, alleviates government's overreach into our private lives. And listen to this. This is from the Uline.com, U-L-I-N-E.com, Uline Shipping Supplies. Um, This is a, a... I'm not sure if this is an article they've written or or what, but it listen, regulatory compliance. In fact, in 2014, regulatory compliance cost exceeded 2014 estimated U.S. corporate income tax revenues of 333 billion, and nearly matched corporate uh, pre-tax profits of 2,235 trillion. They also exceeded 2014 total individual income tax revenues of one. $1.386 $1.386 trillion, $1.386 trillion. So $2.235 trillion in the corporate pre-tax profits. Listen, we can't afford this. Here Rob's talking about how he's competing with those things they like. We, we like to hear the term sustainable energy, sustainable energy. Even, even the wind and solar are now facing uh, fines, very heavy fines, because of the um, concerns over the birds I believe this is in California, and they're fining these companies. So the wind company, uh, wind turbine company in California is going out of business now, I believe. Uh, uh, Ultimate Wind is ceasing its California wind operations due to concerns over bird kills. 800 wind turbines in Diablo Range and San Quint, uh, Joaquin Valley um, will be shutting down. Uh, and I think that has to do with the fines as well. And the top six agencies, in some of the information that Paul has given us, the top six agencies in producing these regulations and uh, oppressing us and putting us in this bondage, um, the EPA is the, one of those top five. 60 federal departments, agencies, and commissions have 3,415 regulations in development at various stages in the pipeline. The top six federal rulemaking agencies account for 48% of federal regulations. Those are, those are laws as David Barton said, you can be put in jail. These are felonies. Many business owners don't even know they're breaking the law most days. These, this is how government nails people they don't like. They let it slide on some of them. We don't know that it's a law. We never saw it go through Congress. Um, and yet they nail people on things that they didn't even know were an issue when they decide to target companies. And we've seen that. We saw that with the Gibson Qatar company a couple election cycles back. Um, 48% of all these federal regulations, these departments are the Treasury, Commerce, Interior, Health and Human Services, Transportation, and EPA. And EPA is now coming into your private property with their waterway, wanting to tell you how you can rule your waterway. Gentlemen, I wanted to get those facts in there. I thank you both for joining me today. We have so much more to talk about. I have piles of paper in front of me. Of course, as David Barton said, if I were to put the piles of paper on these regulations 700 pages a week, it would take me 25,000 years to read it. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. In closing, um, you've got maybe a minute or two minutes. Um, Paul, I'll go to you first. Okay, well, everything uh, about life that you experience uh, has to do with uh, government regulation in some way. Uh, These different agencies are able to practice all three uh, branches of government in and of themselves. They are legislative, they are executive, and they are judicial. They write the rules and regulations they want to put in place. That's legislative. They are the one that execute them, carry them out. That is uh, the executive branch. And then also, if you're found guilty of violating one of these rules or regulations, uh, they have the right to pass sentence on you and fine or imprison you. That is judicial. They practice all three forms of government inside each regulatory agency. And um, they are uh, basically a central planning committee. And how could we have been so foolish right after World War One? 
<laughs> uh, of all the things we fought, and we come back in this country and allow it to take place right in our own government. Uh, Rob, a minute. Um, one of the most people in this country have no idea how electricity is made. And we have really a world class utility industry because, based on reliability, and last winter when it was really cold, all of the coal fired power plants were running at 100%, including the ones that they were getting ready to close down. So, what could possibly happen here is when they close these coal fired power plants down and we get a really cold winter or a really hot summer, we're going to have brownouts and blackouts. In fact, last winter there were brownouts and blackouts, I believe, in the Carolinas because there was not enough capacity to make the electricity that we need. So this is something that could happen as soon as the next year or two because they're going to continue to close these coal-fired power plants. So you just be on the watch because you're going to, if we have some real cold weather or real uh, hot weather in the summer, we're not going to have enough uh, ways to make electricity. I almost think that's what they want. Rob Potter has Potter has been my guest today. He is the president and owner of a Tri-State Sales uh, Coal Sales Company in West Virginia. Paul Reynolds has been my guest. He's a national committee man out of Alabama and also with uh, the Reynolds uh, Technical Associates. I thank you both for joining me. You've been given a lot of information, but understand you hold the key. You could cause this to stop with an outcry. You could make a difference. Force your congressional members to put a stop to it. You've been encouraged.